Okay, so let's talk about T3 instances or T class instances in general. T3 is the latest as of this video in the T class, and I typically recommend you go to T3 classes immediately over T2 because they're newer and they have more power and they're even slightly cheaper. So why are T3 instances amongst the cheapest server types in AWS and also the most popular? Well, I think they're the most popular because they're the cheapest. What you might or might not know is that these T3 instances work on a system of CPU credits, so low cost versible CPU performance. They're designed to run the majority of general purpose workloads at much lower cost. The T3 instances work by providing a baseline CPU performance while providing the ability to burst above the baseline for times when more performance is required. So that sounds nice on the surface. T3 instances make use of credits to track how much CPU is used. So they accumulate CPU credits over time when you're below the baseline. And when you're above the baseline, you spend those credits. T3 instances are unlike other ones in the market today since such customers can sustain a high CPU performance whenever and however long is required, which is not explicitly said here, but there is this T3 unlimited mode that lets you burst above the baseline for longer periods of time for more credits than you have, but at a cost. And that's actually over here, unlimited and standard mode. So let's just go ahead and read a little bit about how CPU credits work. So you earn CPU credits when you're below your baseline. The baseline is a percentage of CPU usage. If you're below the baseline, you get credits, CPU credits up to a point. If you're above the baseline, you start spending credits. Okay, now the baselines are pretty low and they're lower the smaller the server is. So um, let's just go right to T3 here. And we'll see that you earn some credits per hour. Again, the smaller the server, the less credits you earn per hour. And you have a maximum cap of how many credits that you can accrue. So the T3 Nano only earns six credits per hour and only can get 144 total. But if you get to the larger server sizes, you can get more. Now the baseline here is very important. If you are on small T3 server types, the baseline CPU is pretty small and very easy to go over. So Nano, Micro, Small, these are the most common T3 instances and their baseline CPU utilization is low, 5%, 10%, 20%. Once you go over these percentages, you start spending credits. And it's very easy to go over this, especially if you do server types where you're putting everything on there. If your database is on the same server as your application code, for example, you're gonna eat up those CPU credits very quickly because that server is doing a lot of stuff. And that all requires CPU usage, probably above the 5%. Okay, so, you earn credits per hour, you spend when you're over your baseline. And if we read up here, we'll see uh, the CPU credits used depend on CPU utilization. The following uh, scenarios all use one CPU credit. If you're at 100% utilization for one minute or 50% for two minutes, or if you have two V CPUs and you go above 25% utilization for two minutes. Now, what's not clear to me here is if 100% utilization is 100% of your baseline or if it's actually 100% of the CPU itself. Let's just scroll down here a little bit. So the earn rate, you earn a certain amount of credits per hour if you're below the baseline. Credit accrual limits, right? You have a limit. So we're looking at here, it's called a leaky bucket. You accrue stuff over time. So like water is dripping into the leaky bucket that you're accruing water in the bucket. In our case, we're accruing CPU credits. We're gaining credits. If we fill up the bucket and meet our maximum credits, then it just spills over. You don't get any more credits. So that's the maximum credits. Now, if you start spending credits, then the water, the credits are leaving the bucket that way, CPU credit usage. T2 instances have launch credits. So if you launch a new instance in a T2 class, you get a certain amount of credits off the start. You can also actually stop a server fully and start it fully. So not the reboot, but a full start and full stop. And then you start again with your uh, baseline launch credits, which is a little bit of a trick if you run out of credits and need something to um, get cleared out quickly. T3 and T4G do not earn launch credits because they have this unlimited feature by default where if you have no credits available and you need that CPU usage, you're allowed that CPU usage for an extra fee. Credits don't expire. You have baseline utilization is expressed as a percentage of CPU utilization, which is calculated like this. It's basically based on time. T3 that nano, two CPUs earn six credits per hour resulting in baseline utilization of 5%. So six credits earned divided by two over 60 minutes equals 5% utilization. So this is the deal with T3 instances. They're cheaper and therefore more attractive, but you have to track your baseline utilization. 
Now to do that, you can actually go on into CloudWatch. So let's go ahead and see here. I'm going to go into this instance and see my monitoring here. And this is a T3 what large instance. So if we go over here, T3.large has 36 credits per hour, maximum earned is 864, two CPUs, 30% baseline, which means when I start using the CPU over 30%, two CPUs in this case, I'll start eating away credits. Now, if I go to monitoring here, um, you can also see these graphs in CloudWatch, but we'll just go ahead and check down here and we'll see there are graphs and information for credits. So for my credit usage, I could use a little bit of credits when I spun up the server because I was doing things when it got created. But you can see my credit balance here has gone up over time since I've launched because I'm not doing anything on the server, right? It starts at no credits because this is a T3 instance. A T2 instance would start with some. Now, if I start doing stuff in the server, we'll see the credit balance going down. The credit usage will go up and eventually I'll hit zero. And then I'll be doing uh, the unlimited mode. The unlimited mode kicks in when you're out of credits and you're still using CPU and you start paying extra for that unlimited mode. Now, eventually the unlimited mode becomes expensive enough where that you'd want to move to a different instance type. So eventually, if you're in the T3 instance types and you're basically unlimited constantly because you've run out of CPU credits, you end up having a server that's just about as expensive as an M5. So I believe the rule of thumb is that a T3 large becomes as expensive as an M5 large if you're using unlimited credits all the time or just very often. So that's a trade-off to definitely keep an eye on. Now, the other thing is that when you hit your CPU credit limit, you'll see degraded performance. I've actually noticed this even with the unlimited mode turned on. And especially if you're using T2 instance types, then you just, you know, there's no unlimited mode, although I think you can turn it on for T2s as well. But then you are basically capped at that baseline of CPU usage. And you'll definitely notice that when your server is basically stop responding. Okay, so that's basically all I want to say about the T3 instances. They're very cheap. They are very popular. They come on servers that are often uh, loaded with other T3 instances, like the actual physical hosts. So they also have a higher failure rate in, in my experience. So the newer the server type, the less failure rates I often see. T2 instances, for example, are still very popular and highly used. And in an AWS instance with something like 200 T2 instances, we saw failures very often. And once we moved to T3 instances, we saw them less often. And when we moved to T3A instances, we saved 10% because they're cheaper. And we saw even less failure issues. So the least popular server types often have less issues. So that might be one thing to keep in mind. I also actually recommend using AMD instances because that 10% cost savings you get is nice. And the CPU performance for a general purpose, like a web application, PHP applications in my case, aren't really noticeable. Now, this depends on your scale, of course, so that's not a blanket statement. I could just go ahead and make it night. Might not be true for you, but it is for me. So all in all, these have a system of CPU credits. This is something you definitely need to keep in mind when choosing to use a T2 or T3 or T4 instance type.